Today we're going to be talking about something quite interesting in Python and this has to do with pickling which in Python just means serializing an object so that we can save it somewhere and so that we can also unpickle it and retrieve it when we need it. And in general when we save some data from a program we usually put it into a JSON file or into a text file but what if you have a class and that class has attributes and you've already made modifications and created an instance and you want to save the instance of the class, the actual instance. Well, that's one place where we can actually use pickling. We can save this instance of that object and load it back into memory so we can use it later. So let me show you how this works by importing the pickle module, which is a native module to Python. We all have it, so we can just use it by typing import and we will also import JSON so I can show you the problem we're trying to avoid. So we're going to need a class called fruit and this class is going to have an initializer and inside the initializer, we're just going to set this fruit to have a name of type string and it's going to have some calories of type float. Now the self.name is going to equal the name and the self.calories are going to equal the calories a basic initializer and we'll have one function that says describe fruit and here we'll print the self.name self.calories and it's going to have a separator of the colon and a space. Now just to make sure it actually works correctly we're going to create a fruit instance so fruit of type fruit is going to equal this fruit of banana and it's going to have 100 calories. Then we'll just type in fruit dot describe fruit and if everything goes well we should have a banana with 100 calories. Now let's pretend we want to create some modifications to this fruit. Of course we just type in fruit dot calories. Now it has 150 calories for some reason and now we want to save this fruit. We want to save the new fruit with 150 calories. Now one way to do this of course would be to say with open let's say banana dot json in write mode as file and now that we have the json file opened we can add data to that json file so here we can type in that the data is going to equal a dictionary and we'll just type in name is going to equal the fruits dot name and that the calories are going to equal the fruit dot calories then we want to dump this into the JSON file as, as a dictionary. So json.dump and we need to pass in the data object into the file, which is the JSON. Now, if we run this, we're going to get a banana.json file with 150 calories and the name of banana. And to retrieve it, we need to do the exact opposite. So we need to create another with open. So here we type in with open banana json now that that exists and we want that to be in read mode as file and then we just want to get that data back so we can say data equals json dot load and we're going to load that file and we can just print that data to see if we get that data back and if we run it we're going to get that data back as a dictionary now you might be asking, why am I putting you through all this basic JSON stuff? Well, the answer is quite simple. As you can see here, we went through a lot of hell just to create that data, dump it into a JSON file and to get that data back. It also took a considerable amount of code. And we didn't even get to the point where we have to dump this data into the fruit object once again, so we can use that data. What I want to show you is how we can literally put this fruit into a file and then we can just load that fruit when we need it. So all of this was necessary to show you the trouble that we are going to avoid. So instead of having all this nonsense and taking all that time to load a JSON file, let's just delete all of that. Now we still have the fruit with the calories set to 150, but here we can type in with open and this time we're going to type in data.pickle. And the extension doesn't really matter. It can be any name you want, but I would avoid typing .txt or something that's already quite common. Pickle is a very nice naming convention in case you don't have the creativity to make your own. So I would just go with pickle if I were you. 
And here we want to write some bytes. So WB, and we're going to say as file. Now a lot like the JSON file, we can just type in pickle.dump. And inside here, we're going to dump the fruit, the actual fruit object, and it can be any object in Python, and it's going to serialize that. And serialize just means converting converting an object into a byte stream. So here we're going to serialize that object and put it into the file. Now, if we run this, we're going to get data.pickle. And it's impossible to read that file without opening it. So the only way to read from that data is to open it ourselves, either with Python or some other program. So now that we have this and we wrote it down, we can delete everything we have here. And now we're just going to open that file. So with open, and we're going to get the test, uh, and we're going to get the data.pickle in read bytes mode as file. And here we can say that the fruit of type fruit is going to equal pickle.load, and we're going to load that file. Now the cool thing about this is that we can call fruit and we can describe that fruit. And as soon as we run this program, we're going to get our banana back with 150 calories. And we can continue editing that fruit as we please. We can say fruit.calories is now 200 and so on. And we can describe that fruit again. So fruit.describe and it will edit it to 200 calories. So we were able to directly load that file from the pickle data and deserialize it. So we were unpickling it, which is also referred to as deserializing. And that just converts it from a byte stream into an actual object that we can use in Python. So there were only two methods you need to remember for basic pickling. You have the pickle.dump, and you just pass in what object you want to dump, such as the fruit we had from earlier, into the file of your choice, which will be the file you pick here. And then you have the pickle.load, which takes that pickle data and deserializes it. Now I have one huge disclaimer before you go around on the internet unpickling random files. Pickled data can be extremely dangerous because there's no way to understand what's inside the file until you actually run this file. So what that practically means is that someone can put a shell command in that pickle data. So when you run it, it can actually gain access to your computer. And that's something you don't want to happen. So it's really important that you only load pickle data that you absolutely trust. Do not load pickle data from the internet without having a verified source. And again, if you want to save this pickle data, just create the file again here with open the file of your choice in reading bytes mode. And then instead of loading the file, we just want to dump the file. So pickle.dump the fruit into the file. And now we're going to save 200 calories as the base result. So something more interest. So something more interesting would be two plus equals it each time we run the program. So now if we run that, we're going to get an error because this is supposed to be write bytes. Now we will run that again, we get the initial value of 150. And now we saved it with 350. And if we run it again, we have the initial value of 350. And we're going to save it with a value of 550. Because each time we run it, we're getting the old fruit object, we are editing it, and we are saving it in the pickle data. So that was a simple example on how useful it can be to pickle data. It can really save you a lot of effort when it comes to serialization with objects, because of course, you don't want to create a text file, or a JSON file each time you're trying to save an instance. And that's really all I wanted to share with you guys today. So do let me know in the comments section what you think about it, or if there's some interesting aspect of pickling that I missed that I could explain in a future video, perhaps. But I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say about it. And with that being said, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.